the Fastlane on the road to WrestleMania with WWE Fastlane from the WWE Thunderdome on the WWE Network and on Peacock for the first time ever. If you're watching on Peacock, let me know in the comments below. But WrestleMania 37 right around the corner on April the 10th and 11th, respectively. However, at WWE Fastlane, we have a had a WWE Universal Championship match with Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan, Edge as the special enforcer. Drew McIntyre and Sheamus, no holds barred as well. Seth Rollins, Shinsuke Nakamura was recently just added to following Friday Night SmackDown the other night. WWE United States Championship match along with the WWE Intercontinental Championship match as well with Matt Riddle and Mustafa Ali and then Big E and the new Apollo Crews. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler are defending their WWE Women's Tag Team titles once more against Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. The first intergender match in WWE in quite some time, Alexa Bliss versus Randy Orton, of course, continuing the feud, the current story with Orton and the Fiend Bray Wyatt. And then arguably the uh, most stupidest match ever with B -B -B Braun Strowman and Shane O'Mac, Shane McMahon. Uh, so this is uh, a little review. This is live reaction to play, play, of course, live right here on YouTube, but uh, more so than not, just a, a little review uh, from myself, your host, Encyclopedia Sports, Cool Hand Luke 96. Links in the description below for social media, so be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. From watching the event, taking notes, uh, and then sitting down, recording an audio only uh, live reaction, play, -play, -play um, review, basically uh, live right here on YouTube. So, thank you for tuning in and listening. As always, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below with that thumbs up button. Share hashtag WWE, hashtag WWE Fastlane, hashtag WWE Thunderdome as well. Chat questions and comments, super chats, super stickers. Always greatly appreciated. Uh, we'll begin uh, with the kickoff pre show uh, because, hey, that's uh, when the action began at 6 p.m. Uh, for the hour kickoff pre show before the main card began. And then it was about a two and a half, almost three hour pay per view. And in my opinion, it was a damn near perfect show as they're getting everything finalized, set up for WrestleMania that is only now a few weeks away. Uh, so we'll begin with the kickoff pre show and then get into the main card uh, with um, all these championship matches that we ended up getting, along with a few damn good singles matches uh, as well. Uh, but uh, Matt Riddle, Mustafa Ali for the U.S. title, unfortunately uh, got moved to kick off pre shows. A very good match, I thought. Riddle won, retained his U.S. title. However, post match, that's where most of the action was uh, as Mia Yim, Reckoning, Shane Thorne, Slapjack of Retribution walked out uh, after Mustafa Ali asked them, Why do you keep bringing me down? When all along, you know, we've all known it's been him doing it to himself anyway. Uh, and then he also kept asking, you know, what the hell are you doing? Told them to get back in line. And then uh, they ended up walking out. Double D, Die Jack, and Dio, T-Bar, and Maze, respectively. They then hit a double choke slam on Mustafa Ali, Mustafa Ali, depending on who you ask. Uh, finally bringing uh, Retribution to uh, their leader. So it seems like Mustafa Ali uh, with Retribution, Retribution as a, as a whole, as a stable, uh, faction, whatever you want to call them, um, they're done for for the time being. Uh, but we'll see what the future holds. Honestly, I'm glad this is over uh, just because it's been a disaster since the beginning. The booking has been terrible. Uh, sort of like, you know, being sick and tired of being sick and tired. You move on eventually. Uh, so, good match, but post match, that's, you know, where it was. And uh, Riddle won, but then. Retribution turns on uh, Mustafa Ali, and and now for Retribution moving forward, I would expect you know half of them to probably go back down to NXT. They'll figure something out for him. Uh, I mean, Dijak and Mia Yim being the two that could and probably, hopefully, they will stay up on the main roster. We'll see. Only time's going to tell. But um, Retribution seems to be uh, no more uh, now moving forward. Uh, they then ran uh, an injury angle uh, for Shane McMahon um, as it was supposed to be Braun and Shane in singles later on in the show, but they ran an injury angle uh, with uh, Shane injuring uh, his, I believe it was his left knee if I'm mistaken, yes, earlier in the day while uh, warming up, getting ready for the match, 
and he was actually wearing a, a Braun Strowman Strowman Express t-shirt. However, they put a, a stupid sticker uh, on the Strowman part, which I thought was pretty funny. So he was wearing a stupid Express t-shirt when he got injured, so who's stupid now? But really, we all know Shane O'Mac uh, probably got injured uh, more so than not poisoned by that Nickelodeon slime last week on Monday Night Raw. Kickoff pre-show then was officially done and over with. We then moved on to the main card. We felt the same earthquake that hit Japan over the weekend during New Japan Pro Wrestling as well to kick off Fastlane in the Thunderdome with the WWE Women's Tag Team title bout with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler versus Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair for the Tag Team Gold. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler ended up retaining as thought because this match was pointless because Sasha and Bianca... They've already been announced as opponents for each other for WrestleMania for the SmackDown Women's title. So, um, you know, two matches, two rematches basically with these four in the past month at back-to-back pay-per-views now. Um, We've known, you know, Sasha and Bianca with Belair winning the Rumble that this was going to happen. There's not really a whole lot going on right now in the women's division. Anyway, I mean, you got to go back to Bailey and Sasha in my eyes for the uh, last best thing that they've done, uh, the WWE Women's Division, tab bit better than um, the AEW Women's Division, but not by much. Uh, but I'll digress there. But yeah, Nia and Shannon retained, and you know now moving ahead, who the hell are they gonna face? Because the thing is, they have women's tag team titles, but they don't have women's tag teams. That's the problem, and you know the booking then comes in. Uh, to play with all that as well because they give more time to, you know, other and, you know, yeah, probably um, more noteworthy uh, feuds that are currently going on right now anyway. Uh, or that could be potentially going on depending on how they book it, of course. But, um, yeah, this match was pointless. And really, I only think it kicked off the show just because they wanted to save everything else for last because everything else ten times better than... You know, a match that one has already happened, two we already know what the hell's going to happen uh, with the outcome uh, because of the the side feud with Sasha and Bel Air, but you're having them team up before Mania. I mean, I get it. It continues the feud. It you know hypes up the match even more because then post match they had an altercation, which of course is going to lead into Mania. But don't make the match official. The point of this is don't make it anything official until after the final pay-per-view on the road to wrestlemania they've already announced four matches for mania before Fastlane. you could have saved all four of those for tomorrow night on raw or this upcoming friday night on smackdown and then you still have a few more weeks to book and promote the rest of the show okay some things don't make sense i get it. it is what it is it's frustrating sometimes We'll still watch and still discuss what's going on, but come on, man. Like, it's just, come on. So, they did have an altercation, you know, post matches mentioned, to keep the story going with uh, Sasha Banks. She ended up blaming Bianca Belair, uh, saying, hey, basically, you're the reason why we lost this. It's all your fault. Uh, some pushing and shoving, but uh, Double B was okay with it. She said, okay. It's all right. She pointed the WrestleMania sign once more, and they cut. So then we uh, had Shane McMahon walking backstage with ice on that left injured knee of his while he was on crutches as well. Elias then walked up with uh, Riker by his side. Elias wants to know if it's going to be possible if you know he can perform once more at WrestleMania. Shane then says he has an idea, so first thinking there, the drifter uh, is going to help out Shane O'Mac tonight against Braun Strowman. We'll see. However, then next, we had an Intercontinental Championship match with Big E and Apollo Crews. Very, very good match, I thought. Finished, though, sort of botched. Don't know if it was planned like that or not. Probably. I don't know. Nor do I really care. Big E was going to win. He did. He retained. Um, but with the finish... It looked like Apollo ended up pinning Biggie Langston, but then they showed a replay of it. It looked more like they pinned each other simultaneously at the same time. So Biggie, as your champion, he still retains. 
But then Apollo Crews, of course, with the new character that he's uh, been giving us the past few weeks on SmackDown, got some heel heat, which was a good thing. Kept attacking uh, post-match, which makes it seem like this feud's going to continue. As Apollo kept screaming, it's not over, like he's Chris Daughtry or somebody, before they cut once more. Uh, So, with both mid-card titles both mid-card title matches, I should say, out of the way, uh, along with the women's tag team title match, um, along with Shane telling everybody, hey, I have an idea, uh, with Elias and Braun for later on in the night. You know, the first 45 minutes or so of the event were um, all right, but, you know, as mentioned, it's probably a good thing that they got these uh, done and out of the way before... Uh, with everything that was still yet to come because you don't want to always try to rank them, but we all know with the main event, the co-main event, and the few matches prior to that, those are your you know main focal points that you're trying to get across um, to get people to buy in and you know continue to watch whether the ratings are down or not. Who gives a shit? Sit down and watch and quit complaining. So, um, yeah. Good match uh, with Big E and Apollo, uh, but then backstage after they cut uh, from Apollo screaming and yelling after his beat down on Big E, we had an Old Spice segment backstage. Uh, there's an Old Spice guy selling deodorant. Kiritazawa walked up. He was looking for our truth. He asked the Old Spice dude, you know, hey, have you seen our truth anywhere? Like he's gonna know. Like come on. I get it, you know, with the sponsorships and all that, but, and it, this actually was pretty funny, I thought, but, um, Kirchza was looking for R-Truth, while in the meantime, Truth was actually hiding in the Old Spice pop-up that they had set up, with rows and rows, uh, of deodorant, but long story short with this, the Old Spice pop-up ended up getting knocked over, the Old Spice dude became 24-7 champion for about five seconds or so, and then R-Truth as Tazal was covered in Old Spice, uh, Truth pinned the Old Spice guy and won the 24-7 title back. And then Akira Tazal was still pissed off because Truth, of course, ran off and Tazawa blamed the Old Spice guy. After all that, we were then showed a video of Shane O'Mac warming up and getting injured from earlier in the day. But then right after that, Shane, Elias, and Riker are all in the ring. The lights are dimmed. Shane introduces Elias, who performs. However, Shane then tells, cuts him off, tells him he forgot to tell him, and this is Shane's bright idea that he had, tells Elias, tells him he forgot to tell him that he's replacing him tonight, so it looks like right now we're going to get Elias replacing Shane O'Mac against Braun Strowman. So who's stupid now? So Braun Strowman versus Elias did end up happening with Braun and Shane now going to be taking place at WrestleMania. Braun powered his way to victory versus Elias. They really didn't do anything post-match, so um, they got a few weeks to promote this, continuing to do what they're doing um, with um, the stupid match we'll get at WrestleMania with Strowman and McMahon. First WrestleMania video package then was next, as we're now only 20 days away from the showcase of the Immortals. Matt Riddle then strolled up backstage on his scooter following his victory over Mustafa Ali earlier on the night, retaining his United States Championship. Strolled up to Shinsuke Nakamura, who was uh, warming up backstage before Shin's match, which ended up being next against Seth Frickin' Rollins. And they had a funny but bro altercation, if you will. Um, can't believe actually I just said that, but okay, we'll move on. Um, however, I will say this, okay, because I, I believe really we all should embrace the vision with Seth frickin' Rollins, as Rollins and Nakamura, as mentioned, was in fact next. Rollins ended up winning courtesy of his stomp in an excellent, I thought, back and forth match. However, no Cesaro at any point in time before, during, or even after the match uh, as they cut Faded to Black once more. Uh, And, um, you know, we'll see what they do on SmackDown moving forward with 
uh, Rollins and Cesaro, along with, of course, that's why he faced Nakamura at Fastlane, as Cesaro and Shinsuke have been tag team partners uh, the past, uh, however long it's been, but um, we're going to get Seth Rollins and Cesaro, it looks like, uh, in uh, a singles match uh, at WrestleMania 37. However, I wouldn't mind if they did Rollins and a tag team partner of his choosing, maybe bring Buddy Murphy back into the fold and have them uh, team up in a non-tag team title match, Rollins, Murphy versus Cesaro Nakamura. But they might end up doing that before Mania on a SmackDown, and then we still get Rollins, Cesaro, and singles at WrestleMania, which, of course, that's going to be the payoff because... That's the current feud right now, which uh, is arguably one of the best. But, uh, yeah, Rollins ended up winning uh, with the stomp in uh, what I thought was a uh, excellent, great back-and-forth match. But no Cesaro, which is a little disappointing, but it looks like they'll be saving that. Uh, continuing to build on the road to WrestleMania. We had uh, Tomorrow the Nightmare Begins. This is my brutality. Rhea Ripley going to debut tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw. However, uh, after Rollins and Nakamura tore the house down, we had Drew McIntyre and Sheamus in a no holds barred match that absolutely blew the roof off the joint. So, McIntyre Sheamus was next. Drew ended up making his entrance the same way he's done for quite some time now. However, he was wearing face paint, which was just, you know, unexpected. Was not expecting it by any means whatsoever. He was wearing face paint, blue and white face paint. I might add, which was just odd, okay? Like, seriously, he looked like some drunk at a Penn State game that thought he'd look good with face paint on. Like, whoever's idea it was for him to have face paint during the entrance, and then, of course, it, you know, got washed off during the match, complete failure. I don't know where it came from by any means, but it just, as mentioned, I wasn't, I don't think anybody really was expecting it. Um, you know, I get the story with the history um, you know, being best friends with Seamus and all that. And, you know, he's paying homage to uh, family. But Drew McIntyre with face paint wrestling, he's not the boogeyman. He's not whoever the hell else is, you know, worn face paint during matches. Sting, for God's sakes, is a prime example. Jeff Hardy, Darby Allen, you know, the list goes on and on. I'm not going to get into that. But. You know, long story short on this, Drew McIntyre is just not one to wear face paint. So, enough. Just be done with it. And hopefully, you know, just this one match was uh, all we're going to see of it. Um, but, who knows, they'll probably keep shoving down our throats like they continue to shove everything else down our throats that we don't like. Uh, but it was no holds barred with McIntyre and Sheamus. So, anything goes, anything and everything's legal. Best match of the night by far, I thought. Uh, with the Scottish Psychopath, now Scottish Warrior, and the Celtic Warrior, uh, as they fought throughout the entire WWE Thunderdome, but come hell or high water, McIntyre found a way to defeat his best friend of 20 years to clear his roadblock he had at Fastlane tonight to get to WrestleMania to take on Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship. you got to go back to TNA Impact uh, about five years or so ago now. Uh, it was uh, Lashley. And Drew Galloway, of course, who is Drew McIntyre, uh, in singles for the TNA title. And now, WrestleMania 37, these years later, going to square off against one another during the show of shows. With the WWE Championship on the line, hopefully McIntyre uh, recaptures gold and gets what he would have gotten last year at WrestleMania. That was also supposed to take place in Tampa, of course. We all know what happened there, but McIntyre over Lashley becoming WWE Champion once more here in a few weeks. Final two matches of the evening were Alexa Bliss and Randy Orton, along with Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. Uh, we'll get more into those in a second, along with what I think is uh, to come for all of us this WrestleMania season coming up here in a few weeks. Once more, though, just be sure to like, follow, and subscribe, as always, on social media links in the description below. Alexa Bliss, Randy Orton was the co-main event. However, of course, first, as we always do before matches on pay-per-views, saw the video package that included all the mind games Alexa has been playing on Orton since he burned the Fiend Bray Wyatt alive 
before Christmas at WWE Tables, Ladders, and Chairs, the TLC pay-per-view. This right now, by far, in my opinion, uh, is the best feud currently in the WWE. And just think, okay? Bray Wyatt hasn't done a damn thing since December, basically. But that's the point of the story. So then when he returns, they can finish everything and have their match at WrestleMania. And that's what now we will, in fact, get. But with this match, which was um, cinematic to point, I mean, in-ring, uh, ringside, all the um, all the special effects that they did, very, very good match, I thought. I mean, best wrestling match, though, technically, on Fastlane. McIntyre, Sheamus, and then it's probably a tie with Rollins, Nakamura, and Reigns, Daniel Bryan. But Orton, as he was doing his pose during his entrance up there on the top turnbuckle in the corner of the ring, he started spitting up that Tari has been getting sick with the past few weeks. More mind games, of course, from uh, Sister Alexa. But the bell rings after, of course, Bliss then made her entrance as well. Orton, as they're in the middle of the ring, walked towards Alexa, but then fire just erupted out of nowhere. Orton got up, ran over into the corner. Alexa moved out of the way, so RKO goes into the steel post. Uh, the lights were dimmed, too, by the way, um, throughout this whole entire match. So, you know, it had a cinematic type feel to it, you know, to a T, to a point, as mentioned, but... Um, you know, it wasn't like it was filmed at a remote location as all the other ones, uh, for the most part have been. Um, now I don't know if this was actually live during the show or not, if they filmed it earlier in the day and then they just put it in as a co-main event or not, I don't know. Uh, probably because it's what it seems like they've done for all the other ones, uh, in this feud at least, um, just so they have everything right, so then when they, you know, show it, it has us, you know, their eyes wide open, like, what the hell is going on? As mentioned, with the lights being dimmed, um, speaking of light fixtures, Alexa looked up at those very light fixtures as they were ringside, then back at Randall Keith Orton, um, before the lights fell from the sky, almost took out the Viper, and who knows, that could have been it. But Alexa was playing mind games, mind games, and even more mind games, uh, throughout the whole entire match as well, telling Randy, hey, come on, let's play. We're in my playground now. Why the hell not? You know, you go to the park, you go to a playground, you know, un unless you're some creep, you don't go there just to stand and not do a damn thing. So she blew him a kiss as they got back in the ring. But then remember that fireball? I believe it was in between Christmas and New Year's, if I'm mistaken, maybe right after early here, uh, January 2021, um, one of those fireballs that she shot at him, and, you know, he was blinded for a few weeks. She blew him a kiss, uh, but then a fireball right to the face once more. And then as Orton stands back up, Orton is grabbed from hell below before the fiend Bray Wyatt emerges from the depth. The fiend Bray Wyatt has returned. He is back, still burned to a crisp, by the way just as he looked the last time we saw him back on December the 20th. That was WWE TLC, that Firefly Inferno match between Orton and Wyatt, Orton with the win, Orton burning the Fiend Bray Wyatt alive. We haven't seen him since. Now, a few months later, he's back. Sister Abigail for the finish. Alexa then hopped on for a ride for the pin. One, two, three, winner, winner, chicken dinner. As the Fiend Bray Wyatt and Sister Alexa Bliss sit and stand on Randy Orton before they faded to black to close out the match. We've known for a while now we're going to be getting Randy Orton versus the Fiend Bray Wyatt. However, now it is in fact official. They have three more weeks to promote this for WrestleMania, so we'll see what happens from now until then there. Uh, but extremely excited, uh, in my opinion, I am at least. You know what you're thoughts are let me know in the comments below but extremely excited uh, for them to finally uh, throw down with the fiend bray wyatt returning we then had the four match wrestlemania uh, advertisement with a few matches they've already announced we'll get more into you know those along with what i think will in fact happen here in a few weeks 
um, here momentarily. Uh, but before then, like, follow, and subscribe as always on social media. Main event time of Fast Lane. It was Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan with Edge as the special enforcer. It was a slow-paced back-and-forth match until the end, of course, as they all are. Uh, Paul Heyman, along with Edge, they were both standing ringside throughout the entire match, but Edge was a special, the special enforcer. So, in that regard, with the ref that got knocked out, Edge ended up becoming the official after the ref got knocked out after a running knee from Daniel Bryan because DB went for running knee on Reigns. Reigns moved out of the way. The ref was standing, of course, right behind him. And the ref was knocked out cold. He, he slid out underneath the ring. So Edge, you're official then at that point. A few near pinfalls, but, but nothing major happened in, in that regard while Edge was the so-called uh, special enforcer turned referee. But then Jey Uso came out of nowhere. Super kicked Edge. Super kicked Daniel Bryan. He then grabbed a steel chair. However, on a reversal, Daniel Bryan hit Jey Uso with a running knee. Daniel Bryan then grabbed that same steel chair, went to town. However, when he went to hit Reigns, Reigns moved out of the way once more. And then Daniel Bryan hit Edge with the steel chair. And then a Superman punch from Reigns. Spear that missed. And then they went back and forth a little while. Edge, along with the ref, both knocked out cold. So there's no ref, there's no special enforcer, there's no nobody. Because they didn't send another referee out until later. But Daniel Bryan finally got, as he's been stating, I will get you to tap out, big dog. And he finally got Reigns to tap out. It was very subtle. No one saw it, though, other than the camera. So it didn't count. And then right after Reigns tapped out, but of course with no one seeing it, including Edge, who was a special enforcer turned ref because the ref was knocked out, Edge out of nowhere with that same steel chair that Jey Uso grabbed, Daniel Bryan used, Edge now using that as well, Edge hitting Daniel Bryan with the steel chair to break up the submission, yelling, this is mine, and then Edge ended up walking out. And then that's when the new ref came out, and then Reigns just crawled over to Daniel Bryan, Covered him. One, two, three. Roman Reigns wins and retains his Universal Championship against Daniel Bryan in the main event of Fastlane on the road to WrestleMania. Damn good match with a great finish. Near perfect show, as mentioned. Now, Daniel Bryan does have an argument here that Reigns did tap out. There's video camera proof that he did. Uh, but we'll see where they go with this. Probably nowhere. It'll probably still just be Reigns and Edge for the Universal title at WrestleMania. Um, but I really wouldn't be shocked nor mind if we got a triple threat with three. Um, with either Edge or Daniel Bryan winning. Because Reigns has held the title now since you got to go back to last August. It's run its course. In my eyes, the family part with you know Reigns and Jey Uso would be 10 times better if Jimmy Uso hadn't been injured. Yeah, they've brought him in for a few different matches, but the Jey Uso being main event Jey Uso that says Uso all the goddamn time, it's so annoying anymore, so I just feel like it needs to be done and over with for the time being at least. Give us all a break, especially you know with Edge returning, Daniel Bryan potentially now in the mix too. Give one of those two a title run. Um, and then maybe the payoff with those two, along with what I stated after Elimination Chamber, I feel like you know Kevin Owens uh, should still be in that main event spot as well on SmackDown at least. But you know we'll probably have another draft or shake up at, at some point in time. Uh, so we could get Edge, Daniel Bryan, Edge Owens, maybe Triple Threat with three of those two. Honestly, who knows? You know, throughout the summer and then pay off there uh, around. SummerSlam, but um, yeah, Fastlane overall good show, but um, we'll see what they do basically with whether or not Daniel Bryan's going to be inserted into the mix or not. It seems that way, but they'll probably uh, short him and have him do something else, which is a little unfortunate because he absolutely deserves it, no doubt about it, but 
Um, I mean, I'm in favor, yeah, give me a triple threat with Reigns, Edge, and Daniel Bryan rather than Reigns and Edge. Uh, because other than potentially putting, you know, Daniel Bryan, because this will get us involved into what I think is going to happen at WrestleMania, in an Intercontinental Championship match, whether it be a ladder match or not, or a triple threat, fiddle for it, whatever the hell they decide to do there with the mid-card titles, you know, what else can happen to do? So it, it does make sense, but um, only time is going to tell, of course. they got a few weeks to figure it all out, but earliest, of course, we'll find out uh, on Raw and SmackDown this upcoming week because WrestleMania 37 is, in fact, back in business with live fans in attendance. Tickets are now on sale. They've been promoting that. Uh, it'll be WrestleMania 37, Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida, with Hulk Hogan and Titus O'Neil hosting on April the 10th and 11th, respectively. Bobby Lashley will defend his WWE Championship against Drew McIntyre. Currently, right now, penciled in for the Universal title, it's Roman Reigns versus Edge. But just going back a second ago to potentially adding Daniel Bryan, yes, thumbs up to that. Give me that any day of the week. Uh, and then also just Edge and Bryan in singles competition, for God's sakes. Especially with their stories. Neck injuries, having to retire way earlier than uh, expected. And now they've both since returned, of course. You know, just have it. Whoever doesn't break their neck first wins uh, in that regard, if that does, in fact, ever happen, which seems to be the case. It, it will at, at some point in time, but, you know, once again, only time's going to tell. We'll see. But then also at WrestleMania 37, Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair for the SmackDown Women's title. Uh, I assume that Asuka is going to be defending her Raw Women's Championship as well. Currently right now, I don't know against who. We also, though, have a Raw Tag Team Championship match with the New Day versus AJ Styles and Almos, who, of course, got brought in as the Raw Underground Bodyguard and then became AJ Styles' bodyguard over the past few months. And then I also assume we'll get a SmackDown Tag Team title match as well, but same regard as the Raw Women's Championship match. Don't know opponents for... Uh, current champions if they even have those matches which they will and then we'll have half the matches night one half the matches night two as we did last year and it's just going to depend on what matches are on night one versus what matches are going to be on night two so a lot still to figure out over the next few weeks but wrestlemania 37 right around the corner uh going back to new day aj styles and almost for the raw uh, tag team titles feels so bad right now for aj styles but we'll save that along with them needing to uh, figure out the whole tag team division on both Raw and SmackDown and the women's division, uh, for that matter, as mentioned earlier, because it's absolutely goddamn pathetic. Uh, but we'll, we'll save all that for another time at a later date. Uh, potentially, uh, during live reaction public play streams, watch-alongs, if you will, live right here on YouTube during WrestleMania week. So stay tuned. But in my eyes right now, Potential matches that are pretty clear going to happen. We'll begin with uh, the next NXT TakeOver. NXT TakeOver, Stand and Deliver, that'll also be a two-night event. Night one on April the 7th, night two, April the 8th, night one on USA, night two on Peacock. Um, and this Wednesday night with AW Dynamite and WWE NXT on April the 7th uh, looks to be the final head-to-head -head uh, Wednesday Night War, so to speak, if you will, between the two companies with NXT then. Not official as of yet, but rumored um, that NXT would be moving to Tuesday nights, the Tuesday after Mania, which would be the 13th of April. So, uh, you know, just less than a week later, they'll have um, a takeover and then a, a move to a different night. So um, we'll begin with a takeover and we'll go over the schedule uh, for live streaming uh, live right here on YouTube during WrestleMania week right now as well. But potential matches, you know, as mentioned, that are pretty clear. Hoping we're going to get at least, um, you know, fantasy booking, if you will. But um, it seems to me April 7th, April 8th for WWE NXT TakeOver Stand Deliver Nights 1 and 2. They've already made it official. Finn Balor carrying Cross for the NXT Championship. It seems also we'll be getting Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly as that's like the co-main event match, the co-main event program that's currently going on right now. 
Um, we also could have uh, Eli Drake, LA Knight, with his new name versus Bronson Reed. NXT tag team titles for both the men and the women. We'll have a women's tag team title match. Ember and Shotzi versus I don't know who. EO's going to have a NXT women's uh, championship opponent as well. But you got to go back to the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. MSK won that. They still haven't got their uh, Tag Team Championship match. So it'll probably be Danny Burch and Oni Lurkin versus MSK. Uh, but then you also have Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher. You know, are they together or not? If they're not, have them square off in singles action. But if they are, maybe that Tag Team title match becomes a triple threat. What else we got for NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver? Uh, your current cruiserweight champion, Santos Escobar, uh, just got notified that your cruiserweight champion from this time last year, uh, and still to this point, is still Jordan Devlin, who hasn't been seen since last March because of COVID. So Jordan Devlin's now back, as he, along with Walter of Imperium, returned last week, just recently, on NXT. So we could have a cruiserweight champion uh, match with both current cruiserweight champions to determine the true number one cruiserweight champ. So cruiserweight champ versus cruiserweight champ and Jordan Devlin versus Santos Escobar, I think will happen uh, along with uh, Gargano and the NXT North American title uh, defending that against at least extra Loomis. Wouldn't be shocked if Austin theory turns um, from now until then on the way and Johnny Gargano. But have that happen for the better after this match. Have Johnny Gargano versus Dexter Loomis and then have Austin Theory turn after Gargano either retains or loses the title. Uh, that's the route I'd go there. But then you also have, you know, Walter returning with Imperium, so you know, we're going to have a War Games type of match um, with, with, with them against whoever. I mean, it'd probably be Walter and Imperium uh, and Chomp and Thatcher because they've been doing that, it looks like, on NXT. And then you have your two main matches with with uh, Finn Balor and Karrion Cross and Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. So that's NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver. It'll be a TV TakeOver. Um, going back to Vengeance Day at that point, almost uh, two months ago now, not knowing if, of course... If when we would get the next TakeOver, if it would be um, a TakeOver TV special or a, a TakeOver on a weekend, Saturday or Sunday night. They've gone to Sunday nights, but along with AEW and all their pay-per-views, it seems like now, too, because Revolution was on Sunday just a few weeks ago. Double or Nothing going to be on a Sunday, so no more um, Saturday or Sunday pay-per-views in pro wrestling. It seems like it's going to be strict Sunday pay-per-views in at least every U.S. promotion. Um, You know, New Japan, we'll see what happens with the TV deal. Um, But, uh, you know, they're on tape delay, of course, you know, when they're on. Um, But I'll digress there. Um, Don't really know where I was going with all that. But, um, I mean, really just going over what I think, you know, is going to happen here over the next few weeks. But um, with that being NXT TakeOver, that will be a Wednesday and a Thursday, the 7th and 8th of April. The schedule for myself with streaming, live right here on YouTube, live reactions, play, play a watch along of pro wrestling during WrestleMania week. We'll have Monday Night Raw on April the 5th. Wednesday night, April the 7th, AW Dynamite, WWE NXT. That'll be TakeOver Stand and Deliver Night 1. Night 2, the following night, April the 8th. And then, Friday Night Smackdown, the 9th, the 10th, and 11th, WrestleMania 37, Night 1 and 2, respectively. Raw After Mania, the 12th. And then the 13th and 14th will be the uh, first days of NXT and AEW being by themselves, not on the same time, head-to-head with uh, NXT's rumored move, that's not official yet, but will be, from what I've heard, two Tuesday nights uh, after WrestleMania. So that'll be nine streams in ten days right here on the channel, which I do believe will become a new record 
Hopefully you'll tune in and watch. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe as always on social media. But now WrestleMania 37. WrestleMania 37 back in business as mentioned once more. Of course the four matches they already have advertised. Both of those being the WWE Championship and WWE Universal Championship matches. Along with the SmackDown Women's title and the Raw Tag Team title match. However, I do believe these next upcoming matches that I'm about to discuss, pretty certain we're going to get at the show of shows. The Showcase of the Immortals on the Grandest Stage of them all, WrestleMania. Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton, Seth Rollins and Cesaro. Easter's on its way as well with The Miz and John Morrison versus Peter Cottontail, Bad Bunny with Charlie Caruso's favorite DP and Damian Priest. In some fashion or another, whether it's a triple threat, fatal four-way, ladder match, both mid-card titles will also be defended. Whether it's the United States or an Intercontinental Championship ladder match, I don't know. But with Matt Riddle and Big E still being your current mid-card champs, you got to include Matt Riddle, Mustafa Ali, Jeff Hardy, I do believe, along with Ricochet. And then throw in Sheamus as well, because McIntyre is moving on right now to Bobby Lashley once more for the WWE title to get that title back. And then, you know, where does that leave Sheamus? Sheamus doesn't have anything to do then. So Sheamus into that, uh, and then for the Intercontinental Championship, you got Big E, of course, with Apollo Crews. And then if Daniel Bryan gets into a triple threat, okay, he's not in this. But if he's not in the triple threat, then what do you do with Daniel Bryan? throw him into the Intercontinental Championship pitcher again. Corbin and Nakamura, I do believe, as well, should be included because you go down the list of superstars, wrestlers on each roster, there's not really anybody else I could think of personally. I mean, if you can, let me know. But, um, I mean, that's five and five for both matches. So, yeah, somebody you're... Another is probably going to get left out. They'll probably have the damn Battle Royal again, too, uh, just for the hell of it. But um, we'll see what happens in that regard. But then also, Braun Strowman and Shane McMahon, the stupid match that we're going to get, along with this last one that I'm extremely happy they figured something out for both Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. After Sami attacked KO while he was on commentary on SmackDown this past week, telling him to open his eyes because he's blind and can't see of what's going on. But who's they? Who's they? I'll leave you on that. Who is they? Who's they? If you know who they is or are was, let me know in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed the thumbs up button. As always, like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. Hope to see everybody now during WrestleMania week for more professional wrestling live reactions play play live right here on YouTube.